Homes around the world come in all different shapes and sizes, but with increasing costs and an increased premium on space, affordable properties are getting smaller and smaller. Some people take things to the next level and live in tiny but very efficient houses. Join me, I'm counting down 15 of the most amazing mini houses. Let's start with number 15, the Carrot House in Warsaw, Poland. The Carrot House, which is in Poland, currently holds the record for being the narrowest house in the world. It's squeezed between two existing buildings in the city's Warlaw district. It occupies a previously unused space and measures just 36 inches or 92 centimeters at its narrowest point, and about 60 inches or about 152 centimeters at the widest. The house has two floors. It was completed in 2012, and though it's incredibly small, it is fully functional, with a bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, and a living area. Natural light filters through the skylights, giving the space a bit of an airy feel, which further helps to make it feel more spacious than it really is. The project was inspired by the contrast between Warsaw's old and new architectural styles, particularly in that district, where modern buildings often stand next to much older war-scarred structures. The house's name comes from Israeli writer and filmmaker Etgar Keret, who is known for his surreal and compact stories, and who was the first to live there. Number 14. VIP Shelter in Sweden The VIP Shelter, which is in Sweden, was designed by the Danish design company VIP, and it's a prefabricated steel-clad cabin that offers a modern retreat in the middle of nature. Envisioned as a sort of plug-and-play hideaway, the shelter requires no construction process on site as it arrives fully assembled and ready to be placed anywhere you want. Measuring just 590 square feet or 55 square meters, the VIP shelter is compact, but it still feels pretty spacious because of a smart layout and thoughtful design. There is extensive use of glass, such as large floor-to-ceiling windows that stretch across the front and side walls of the shelter, and this offers unobstructed views of the natural landscape. Whether placed by a lake, in a forest, or on a mountainside, this shelter allows people to feel fully immersed in their surroundings. The space is divided into two levels, a living area on the ground floor, complete with a small kitchen, dining space, and bathroom, and a bedroom area that's accessible by a ladder. The interiors are designed with darker tones, particularly in the kitchen, to create a cozy, intimate atmosphere, and that has a very different feel compared to the brightness of the outdoor views. The philosophy behind the VIP shelter is deeply rooted in the Scandinavian tradition of functionalism, where every element serves a purpose and there's no excess. This applies even to the choice of materials, with the steel frame and exterior panels offering durability and longevity, ensuring that the shelter can withstand the elements and remain low maintenance. This design eliminates distractions, and it encourages a focus on nature, tranquility, and simplicity. Number 13. Maison Bordeaux Maison Bordeaux, which is located in Bordeaux, France, was designed by Dutch architect Rem Koolhaas and was completed in 1998. It's unique for its approach to accommodating the needs of a disabled client, blending cutting-edge design with functionality. The owner was a French man who, after a car accident, was left partially paralyzed and confined to a wheelchair. Rather than buy a simple, single-story home, he asked Koolhaas to create something more complex. The result was a small, multi-level structure that addresses the challenges of accessibility while becoming a showcase of architectural innovation. The bottom level, partially embedded into the hillside, serves as a cave-like storage and utility space. The middle floor, the main living area, is an open and transparent space with floor-to-ceiling windows that provide views out across the landscape. This level is where the family spends most of their time and is designed to be airy and light-filled. The top floor is more private and intimate, containing the bedrooms and library, enclosed by heavy, opaque walls instead of relying on conventional elevators or ramps to connect different levels. Kulhas has designed a large platform, which is essentially a room-sized elevator that moves between the floors. This platform functions as both an elevator and the owner's office, allowing him to move freely and effortlessly between the house's levels. Across the house, the use of raw concrete, glass, and steel gives it a modern, industrial aesthetic, which in many ways hides just how personally tailored and functional the property really is. Number 12. The Glass House, California The Glass House, located on Cemetery Point along the stunning Sonoma Coast in California, was designed by world-renowned architect Richard Clements Jr., who also owned the Timber Cove Inn. Known for his ability to harmonize built structures with their natural surroundings, this house is on a site of over three acres of beautifully landscaped property. But the property is itself surprisingly small. 
Perched on an outcrop that juts 300 feet or 91 meters into the Pacific Ocean, this glass house offers incredible views of the coastline. The location itself, Cemetery Point, was named by famed photographer Ansel Adams, who captured the beauty of the area. And to reach it, you've got to pass through a private gate and down a path that winds through heather and gardens. From there, a narrow piece of land leads down to the house, which is surrounded by cliffs that drop dramatically into the crashing surf below. It is arguably one of the best positioned homes in the country, but it wouldn't be possible to make it any bigger. The glass house has just one bedroom and one bath, but was never intended for resale. A recent remodel added three decks to the structure, including a custom stone hot tub that's so close to the ocean that the salt spray can reach it. The views here are like nothing else, with floor-to-ceiling glass walls granting panoramas of crashing waves, whales, seals, and seabirds. A massive fireplace is the focal point of this cozy lower living room, and this enhances the warmth and intimacy of the space, even as the glass walls provide a connection to the nature outside. Richard Clement Jr.'s design was heavily influenced by Frank Lloyd Wright's organic architecture, and this influence is clearly seen in the way that the house interacts with the environment. The structure seems to blend into the surroundings, making the most of its position here on the rock. But despite its minimalist, nature-focused design, the house offers every modern comfort, meaning that it's the ideal place for a retreat to take a break from modern life. Number 11. The Water Nest 100 in Italy the Water Nest 100 is an attempt at eco-friendly architecture, which was designed by the renowned architect Giancarlo Zema for the Italian company EcoFlow Life. It is an innovative floating residence that combines sustainability and contemporary design to create an environmentally conscious living space on the water. It is essentially a circular pod-like structure that's made from recycled and sustainable materials and was designed to have minimal impact on the environment while offering all the comforts of modern living. It covers an area just over a thousand square feet or about a hundred square meters. It's designed to float on calm waters such as lakes, rivers, and bays, and its circular shape makes the best use of space, a 360-degree view of the surrounding environment, and the house is made primarily from recycled laminated timber and a recycled aluminum hull with large windows to allow natural light to flood in. There is, of course, a huge focus on sustainability with the design. The house is energy efficient and completely self-sustaining, with all its power being provided by photovoltaic panels embedded onto the roof, which generate renewable energy from the sun. These panels can generate up to 4 kilowatts of energy, which is more than enough to power the entire home. And beyond this, the house also uses a sophisticated water recycling system to minimize waste and reliance on external resources. It is a modern and stylish living space. The layout here is flexible and customizable, usually including a large living area, kitchen, dining space, two bedrooms, and a bath. The open plan design ensures that the home feels spacious despite the compact size. It is the perfect example of how a small house can provide all you'll ever need and can be installed in a place where no other homes can't be placed. With novel ideas like these, the Water Nest 100 could well provide a glimpse into what the new homes of the future will be like, especially as we're forced to build more on sites that previously weren't suitable for normal homes. Number 10. The Wickel House, Netherlands The Wickel House in the Netherlands was developed by the Dutch company Fiction Factory as an eco-friendly and modular tiny house that's mostly made from recycled cardboard. The name comes from the Dutch word wikkelen, which means to wrap, which hints at its unusual construction method, as it's made by wrapping 24 layers of high-quality, durable cardboard around a mold to form a strong and insulated structure. This gives it a lightweight modular design, which allows it to easily be transported and assembled to a variety of locations. A house here can be built in sections, each measuring about 4 feet or 1.2 meters in width, and these sections can then be connected to create a custom-sized home tailored to the owner's needs. Now, cleverly, the cardboard layers are wrapped around a rotating mold, and then, once the shell is formed, it's coated with breathable, waterproof membranes to protect it from the elements. The house is then finished with wooden paneling, giving it a warm, natural appearance. Even with all these lightweight materials, the structure is incredibly durable and designed to last for at least 50 years, and it's surprisingly strong with excellent insulation. Now, the cardboard that they used is sourced from FSC-certified forests, ensuring that the materials are responsibly harvested. The production process itself uses fewer resources than traditional construction methods, and because this house is so lightweight, it doesn't require a permanent foundation. This makes it possible to install the house in sensitive natural environments without really damaging the landscape. 
Inside, it features a minimalist, modern design. The interior is pretty simple, yet functional, with a focus on natural materials such as wood, which complements the house's cardboard structure. All this results in an incredibly versatile building that can function as a weekend retreat, an office, a guest house, or even a full-time residence for those who want a minimalist and sustainable lifestyle. Number 9. The Cube Project in Oxford The Cube Project, which is based in Oxford in the UK, is a sustainable housing concept that looks like it's going to reimagine the way we all approach small space living. Designed by Dr. Mike Page, the Cube Project focuses on creating highly efficient, eco-friendly homes within a compact footprint. They were first unveiled in 2011, and the project was developed as a response to growing concerns about energy consumption, urban sprawl, and the environmental impact of traditional building. The Cube is a micro-home that measures just under 10 feet or 3 meters in all directions, and with just under 1,000 cubic feet or 27 cubic meters of space in total, it's designed to house one person or a couple comfortably, offering all the features of a typical home in a much smaller footprint. Inside, it's got a living area, sleeping space, kitchen, and bathroom. The clever use of space and multifunctional furniture allows for each area to serve multiple purposes. For example, the living room doubles as a workspace, and the bed can fold up into the wall, making the most of the space during the day. The cube is designed to be zero carbon in operation, meaning that it produces as much energy as it consumes, largely through the use of renewable energy. Solar panels on the roof generate electricity, while high-efficiency insulation and triple-glazed windows help to minimize any heat loss. It also includes a rainwater harvesting system and a composting toilet, further reducing its environmental impact. The walls, floors, and roof are all heavily insulated to reduce any heat loss, and while the home's compact size ensures that it requires far less energy to heat and cool than a traditional house would, even the appliances within the cube are chosen for their energy efficiency, with low-power LED lighting and energy-saving kitchen devices used throughout. But one of the key aspects of this project aims to show that it is possible to live sustainably without spending a fortune or sacrificing comfort. The cube is designed to be relatively inexpensive to construct and maintain, making it an attractive option for those looking for an affordable, environmentally friendly house. Number 8. The Huga House in Argentina the Huga House is a concept in modular housing that combines simplicity, strength, and sustainability in a portable design. Created by the Argentine company Grandio, the Huga House was conceived as an option for those looking for a flexible, modern, and eco-friendly living space. The name Huga comes from the Danish word Higa, which translates to mean comfort, coziness, and well-being, which is the atmosphere that the house is trying to go for. It's made primarily from reinforced concrete. The house is designed to be strong and resilient, withstanding extreme weather conditions, including earthquakes, which makes it ideal for areas prone to natural disasters. This construction gives the house a sense of security while maintaining a minimalist and modern aesthetic. Despite the solid exterior, though, this house is surprisingly light for a concrete structure, allowing it to be transported on a truck and installed in just one day with no need for a foundation. The house has a compact footprint, measuring just 484 square feet or 45 square meters, but the design makes the best use of all the available space, creating a comfortable and functional living environment. Inside, the house has an open plan with a living room, kitchen, dining area, bathroom, and bedroom, all arranged to provide plenty of space for one or two people. The large curved front window and skylights bring in plenty of natural light, making the interior feel a bit bright and spacious. It's also designed to operate with minimal environmental impact using high-efficiency insulation to reduce any energy consumption, and it's equipped with energy-saving systems such as LED lights that can be fitted with solar panels, allowing it to operate off-grid. But possibly the best thing about the Huga House, though, is its portability, and you aren't stuck in the same place once it's built, like with traditional homes. The house can be installed in a variety of locations, from remote rural areas to urban environments, with little site prep required. And then it can be easily moved to a new location if needed, and ready to live in within just 24 hours. Moving on to number 7, the Koda House in Estonia. The Koda House is another eco-friendly prefabricated home that was created by the Estonian design firm Kodesema. Launched in 2016, it's part of a growing movement towards compact, sustainable, and flexible housing designs that challenge traditional ideas. With around 268 square feet or 25 square meters of floor space, Coda House may seem small, but its layout ensures that it feels functional and spacious. 
The interior includes a living area, kitchenette, bathroom, and mezzanine bedroom with a design that maximizes the available space through efficient use of vertical elements, large windows, and a flexible open-plan layout. The use of natural light is an important feature of the house, with large glass walls on the front allowing sunlight into the interior, creating a bright and welcoming atmosphere. The entire structure is prefabricated in a factory, and it can be transported to a site on a truck. Once delivered, it can be set up and ready to live in within a day thanks to its plug-and-play design. This flexibility makes the Coda house ideal for urban environments where space is at a premium or for temporary living solutions such as pop-up hotels, student housing, or even disaster relief shelters. It's designed to be energy efficient with thick insulation, triple glazed windows, and the option to install solar panels on the roof if needed, all features that help to reduce its energy consumption, making it a low cost and eco-friendly option for homeowners. As for the way that it looks, the creators describe it as minimalist modernism. The exterior is sleek and boxy with clean lines and monochromatic colors that blend into various environments, whether in a city or in the countryside. Since launching, there's been a lot of interest in this design, perhaps not so much for a permanent home, but the potential to help with global housing challenges. With urban populations growing and the demand for affordable, sustainable housing increasing, modular homes like this one offer a flexible and environmentally conscious solution, particularly in the short term, where there's a pressing need to accommodate large numbers of people. Number six, the tiny tack house in Washington. The Tiny Tack House in Washington in the United States was built by Chris and Melissa Tack in 2011. It is a tiny house on wheels that was designed as a full-time residence and with just 140 square feet or 13 square meters of living space, it's an extreme example of small-scale living, particularly for a full family. The Tacks built their house using a minimalist approach, focusing on functionality and aesthetics. The house sits on a trailer, which allows it to be mobile and made mainly from wood. The house has a warm, rustic charm. The exterior is clad in cedar siding, giving it a natural, inviting look that blends well with the surrounding environment in the Pacific Northwest. And the house also has a simple gable roof and large windows, which provide natural light and ventilation. Inside, the house is designed to make the most of every inch. The open plan layout includes the main living area, kitchen, bathroom, and lofted sleeping space. And the living room, which doubles as a workspace, features built-in seating with storage underneath. And the kitchen is small but functional, with essential appliances like the stove, refrigerator, and sink, as well as open shelving to maximize any storage. The sleeping loft is located above the main living area and accessed via ladder and provides just enough space for a cozy, comfortable bed. The loft design makes good use of vertical space, and the large windows nearby ensure that the area doesn't feel cramped or claustrophobic. The Tiny Tack House is a perfect example of the wider ideas of the Tiny House movement, which emphasizes living with less and reducing our environmental footprint. By downsizing, the Tacks have been able to reduce their possessions and focus on the things that matter most to them, such as spending time outdoors and pursuing creative projects. In doing so, they've inspired many others to explore the possibilities of tiny house living. Through their blog and online presence, Chris and Melissa Tack have shared their journey online, offering tips and insights into the design and construction of tiny homes. Number five, tree snake houses in Portugal. The tree snake houses in the Pedra Salgadas Park in Portugal are a great example of how modern architecture can fit within nature. These houses are part of the larger eco-resort, which focuses on sustainability and eco-tourism, allowing guests to enjoy nature without really disrupting it. The design of these houses was inspired by the natural environment surrounding them. They're elevated above the forest floor on stilts. The houses look like snakes as they wind and curve through the trees, gently blending into the wooded landscape. Their sleek, minimalist design, combined with the choice of natural materials, creates the transition between the built environment and the natural world. The exteriors are clad in wood and slate, chosen to help the structures merge with the bark and foliage of the surrounding trees. And the houses are compact, but they're pretty luxurious and designed to provide all the comforts of modern living while maintaining a minimal environmental footprint. Each house has around 269 square feet or about 25 square meters of space and includes a small living area, kitchenette, bathroom, and a bedroom that offers views out across the forest. The use of glass walls here, particularly in the bedroom, creates a sense of being immersed in the forest, making it feel as though the trees are a part of the living space. 
The use of insulation and natural ventilation here helps regulate the temperature inside the houses, reducing the need for any artificial heating or cooling. And also the houses are elevated on stilts, meaning they don't require any extensive foundation work. But beyond their unusual appearance and environmental appeal, the tree snake houses offer a unique experience for any guests. The park's natural springs, hiking trails, and serene atmosphere make it a popular destination for any eco-tourists and those seeking for a peaceful escape from urban environments. Number 4. The Tricycle House in Beijing, China the Tricycle House in Beijing is a portable tiny home that pushes the boundaries of urban living and space efficiency. Designed by the firm People's Architecture Office, this house was conceived as a solution to China's increasingly dense urban environments. The concept of this house is inspired by Beijing's long history of tricycle transportation, often used by vendors and delivery services in the city. The house is designed to be lightweight and small enough to fit on a standard three-wheeled bicycle, which allows it to be moved freely throughout the city. This mobility makes this house an interesting solution for people facing issues of limited space or transient living situations in China's crowded urban areas. The house is made mainly from lightweight polypropylene plastic, which was chosen for its durability and affordability. This plastic is folded into a series of panels that can be expanded or contracted depending on the situation. But when folded up, the house is small and compact, but when fully extended, it offers a surprising amount of living space. The house includes a bed, seating, a table, a small little kitchen area, and storage space. But despite the small design, it makes the best use of space, allowing for a variety of functions to be carried out in this compact living area. Perhaps surprisingly, the polypropylene plastic is recyclable, and the house itself is designed to operate off-grid. A small fold-out sink allows for basic hygiene and washing, with water stored in a tank underneath the tricycle. Solar panels can be attached to the roof to provide electricity, reducing the need for any external power sources, and this off-grid capability makes this house an attractive option for those not wanting to have to connect to municipal provisions. It's probably, though, not a concept that'll catch on in many places around the world, but it is an interesting example of an extreme miniature house that can be taken with you wherever you go. Some of the ideas behind it could well be incorporated into other designs that one day could well become the way that a large number of people live. Number 3. Floating Seahorse Villas in Dubai not all small houses are necessarily cheap, and if you have a spare few million bucks, you could buy one of the floating seahorse villas in Dubai, which are modern floating structures. Developed as part of the Heart of Europe project on the World Islands, the floating seahorse villas offer a one-of-a-kind living experience, combining underwater and above-water living spaces. These villas are located in the Arabian Gulf, just off the coast of Dubai, and features both an underwater and above-water section. Each villa spans three levels, one submerged under and one at sea level and one at an upper deck. This multi-level creates a stunning experience, with residents able to enjoy amazing views as well as the serenity of living on the water. The design gives occupants the feeling of living inside of an aquarium, with fish, corals, and other marine life visible right outside the windows. The underwater level is, of course, the main draw of these floating seahorse villas, offering a connection to marine life and an immersive experience. Large windows and sliding glass doors offer uninterrupted views of the sea, creating a connection between the indoor and outdoor spaces. The deck allows residents to step directly into the surrounding waters, making activities like swimming or paddleboarding easily accessible. On the upper deck, the villa offers additional living space and a private rooftop lounge. This area includes a jacuzzi, sun loungers, and an outdoor living space, providing a perfect spot for relaxation. The upper deck is designed to offer privacy and a sense of escape, making it a great place for unwinding and soaking in the beauty of the Arabian Gulf. The villas are built with cutting-edge materials and technologies that ensure they're both durable and luxurious. They're designed to withstand the harsh marine environment, ensuring that the structures remain resilient to the elements, while also offering high-end finishes and state-of-the-art features. Number 2. Tin Dragon Cottages in Australia the Tin Dragon Cottages in the scenic northeast of Tasmania in Australia are a collection of eco-friendly accommodations that offer guests a unique escape into nature. Named after the historical Chinese tin miners who lived in the region during the late 19th century, these cottages blend history, sustainability, and the stunning Tasmanian landscape into a one-of-a-kind experience. Each cottage is constructed with sustainability in mind, reflecting the owner's commitment to preserving the pristine environment around them. 
The use of recycled materials and energy-efficient systems plays a significant role in reducing the cottage's footprint. Solar panels provide a renewable energy for heating and electricity, while rainwater harvesting systems ensure a self-sufficient water supply. The cottages are built with a rustic charm, featuring natural materials such as timber and stone, which blend in with the surrounding landscape. The design of these cottages draws inspiration from the historical tin mining heritage of the region, with simple architecture that's in line with the practical, humble dwellings of the Chinese miners who once lived here. Each cottage offers amazing views of the surrounding countryside with large windows and outdoor decks that allow guests to fully appreciate the natural beauty of Tasmania. The Ringaruma River, which runs alongside, is an incredible backdrop, and guests can enjoy the sounds of the water while relaxing on their private decks. These Tin Dragon Cottages are a fascinating connection with Tasmania's history. The property includes interpretive signage and walking trails that highlights the stories of the Chinese miners who worked and lived in the region during the Tin Boom. And the area is known for its scenic hiking trails, waterfalls, and pristine rivers. The nearby Blue Tier and Mount Victoria Forest Reserve offer opportunities for bushwalking and mountain biking, while the picturesque Bridestow Lavender Estate and the Bay of Fires, known for its orange rocks and pristine beaches, are within driving distance. Number 1. The One Square Meter House in Berlin, Germany the One Square Meter House is a thought-provoking and minimalist architectural concept that was created in order to challenge conventional ideas of what a home is or should be. Designed by architect and artist Van Bo Lemensel, this tiny house is exactly what its name suggests, a home that occupies just under one square meter of space, which is the equivalent of just under 11 square feet. While despite its extremely small size, the project has attracted international attention for its innovation, portability, and the underlying commentary on housing, affordability, particularly in urban areas. The idea behind the house was to create a structure that could provide shelter, privacy, and a sense of ownership, even in the most crowded urban environments. The compact size also made a statement about how much or how little space a person really needs to live. At just 3.3 feet or a meter wide and long and 6.6 .6 feet or 2 meters tall, the house can be used as a temporary shelter, a workspace, or even a private retreat in a public area. In its upright position, it serves as a standing shelter or small personal office, and while laying down, it transforms into a more conventional sleeping space. The house is fitted with a small door, a foldable seat, and enough space for a person to sit, stand, or lie down comfortably. While minimalist in design, the one square meter house tackles a range of modern issues, particularly those related to housing crises and urban centers. As cities become more crowded and affordable housing becomes increasingly scarce, which it is, the concept of micro-housing has gained some attention. Clemensel designed the house to be DIY friendly, meaning anyone with basic tools and materials could construct one for themselves. This project is also a social experiment, questioning the idea of ownership and public versus private space. Lamentzel encouraged people to take their one square meter houses to public spaces such as parks, streets, or even public squares as a way of claiming personal space in an increasingly crowded world. By using minimal materials and requiring no permanent foundation, the house has a low environmental impact. Its portability means it can be relocated easily, making it an eco-friendly alternative to traditional housing. But along with its practical uses, the one square meter house serves as an art installation and a political statement. By reducing a home to its most essential components, a roof, walls, and enough space to stand or lie down, Lamensel challenges society's perception of space, ownership, and the meaning of home. The house is as much a symbol of protest against rising housing costs as it is a functional shelter. Clearly, you won't be seeing these taking off as people's permanent homes, but by focusing on how much space a person truly needs to rest and sleep, it does question why we feel the need to have much more space and how we would feel if we had to live in smaller places, like so many people around the world, particularly in cities, have to. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.